Hello and welcome to another starter video. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today we're going to be looking at the Windsor command. What does the Windsor command do for you, you may wonder? Well, it Windsorizes your data, funny enough. So, what it actually does for you is that it takes from the top or the bottom or both and replaces these top or bottom values with the next one in line moving in for the data set. This may seem like a lot of magic, but for a lot of instances, this is a much better case than just outright deleting certain outliers in your data, such that you don't suffer a loss of information. So for instance, in my own research, I prefer Windsorizing often to the, well, outright deleting them. So what we're going to be showing here today is how this would work using the example data set that you can find in Stata. I prepared a do file here as usual, because I'm a huge advocate of do files, clearing out the data here. Anything that may be in there, we set my direction to my starter videos here, and we're just going to use the automobile data set that is already available in Stata. So you can easily replicate what I've been doing here. Well, the Windsor command we're going to be using is not a standard package in Stata, so we actually have to install it first by using ssc install followed by Windsor. When I run this command, it's going to tell me I already have it installed and all my files are up to date. I hope. Yes, it does. That's very nice. But for you, it will install this nicely for you, provided nothing goes wrong, of course. I'm going to comment this out now because, well, every time I run this do file, I'm not interested in me getting an installation every time. So once you've done this once, you don't have to do it again. Now, say for instance now, we want to look at miles per gallon, which is one of the variables found in this data set. And suppose for one other reason or another, we want to winsorize the variables in both ends. So suppose now we say that 35 and 41, the three highest observations are considered outliers, along with the three lowest here, where two would be number 12. What Windsor would do, it will replace these values here with the next one in line. So from top part, you will replace 41 and 35 with 34, and from the bottom you replace, well, the two 12s with a 14. Of course, it would be 3, but a 14 replaced by 14, so it should make more difference than that. So the way you do it is simply just by typing Windsor. So you just type Windsor, followed by the variable you wish to Windsor. And now comes a number of options that you must specify in order to use this command. One of those you have to use is gen. Gen is because you are generating a new variable that is basically, well, identical to the old one, except for these Windsorizing points that you've been doing. So we can first call the new variable Windsor underscore miles per gallon. So the new variable, which now, when I specify the rest of my options, would contain this Windsorization that we just spoke about. So look here, you then have to follow either with a P for percentage or percentile, and you can just specify any decimal number here up to 0.5, but for instance, you can remove the top, bottom 1%, and, well, top and bottom 1%, or you can use H to specify just a number of observations. So in my first example here, let's specify H3. That will take the top three and bottom three and we're winsorizing them. So by using this here, for instance, we now get a new variable that is called Winsor, of this case, uh, Winsor MP miles per gallon, sorry. So now if we tabulate Winsor underscore miles per gallon, you will see a new variable where of course you see, hey, the highest value is now 34, lowest 14, these values here has been winsorized in each end. We can of course also do this with the percentile version. So for instance, I can copy this command down here and replace the H here with a P, P of how much percentile we wanna, well, winsorize. Suppose we wanna do 10% in both ends and now we call it miles per gallon two because we already have another variable called winsor miles per gallon. So seeing here, we winsorize it again and now we can go simply just take a look at this Windsor underscore miles per gallon two and see what happened. It took indeed 10% in each end. So now the highest value is 29 and lowest value is 14. You can also specify only to be one end or another. And in this case here, you can find everything in the help file. So H Windsor, you can go in and see the help file here. You have all the options we discussed here. And what you can see here, you have high only or low only. So if we go in and specify that, for instance, you will see now that you can do this only doing, say, the top values. So suppose we want the 12 to be the lowest value still. Well, we can just replace the top three values with, well, the next value in line. So now I want to make a version three and I want to do it high only. This here will generate again a new variable 
which is a winterization, but only in the top part. So if I go in and tabulate Windsor, and then we call it underscore miles per gallon, this can get a three. Then we see it is not winterized the bottom, but the top. All here together, this shows what you can do with winterization, which I think is a very good alternative, in this case, to just outright dropping the variables, because I find that to be too big of a loss of information. So it is more, well, it contains more information by keeping data set and making them less severe in this way. It, of course, also has a downside, but then I will revise, uh, advise you to go and read the paper underlying this here. I hope this video has been of help. My name is Stefan Eriksson, and until next time.